What's up guys, Michael Sasser here from Sasser Stills Boudoir in Los Angeles, California. And today I'm going to be giving you a tour into the studio and give you guys some ideas on how you can improve your space. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. About every week I'm putting out new videos and tutorials to help you guys improve your photography and boudoir business. If this sounds like something you're interested in, I recommend a subscription. For a limited time, it's free. It's, it's always free. If that doesn't sound like something you're interested in, I, I don't know why you're watching this video. All right, let's get downstairs and start this tour. All right guys, welcome to my studio. So this is the retail space of the studio. We've got the main street out here, and this is where clients get their hair and makeup done when they first start. And then this is where they view their pictures at the very end of the photo shoot when they're deciding what to buy during the sales session. So these are the metallic prints that I get uh, printed from this guy in Canada. It's at a company called Lamin Art Industries. It's the only place that I found that does it quite like this, and they absolutely glow. Going back to that idea of showing what you want to sell, the only way to sell wall art is to display wall art. So while they're getting their hair and makeup done, we put their favorite music on the speakers, and then they have like this little mini bottle of rosé. Uh, definitely they're only allowed one of those because we don't want uh, drunk eyes messing up all the photos. So after we get done with all the hair and makeup, we head upstairs to actually do their photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, I'll just throw a cool swipe in there and it'll be cool. So when I was setting up my shooting space, I wanted to kind of have three different character spaces. One is the bedroom space that could kind of feel, you know, unique and separate. We've got the living room space. Couch photos are really amazing. Coffee table shots are really amazing. And then the dining room space, which also feels like just its own little, own little part of the studio. All right, so the first thing I do whenever I get into a studio space, uh, every one that I've had, is I've gotten these shears. They're super cheap, five bucks on Amazon, uh, so you can fill your whole windows on them, doesn't cost you much. I've hung them up with these compression rods, basically like shower curtains that can go anywhere. And the biggest thing about these is they change the quality of light to help with the skin tones. They make them super white and clean and clear, and it just looks beautiful on everyone. So I love shooting in the middle of the day when the sun is coming in like this, it's like flowing through the windows. Some people really like to shoot when it's indirect light, but in order for me to find out when during the day that my studio is gonna get this direct light, I use this app called Sunseeker to be able to tell the trajectory of the sun. It's pretty crazy. I can tell that I have about an hour and a half left of sunlight, direct sunlight coming through these windows until it goes behind that building at around 3 p.m. So the first thing to know is that you don't need the most expensive of everything. This mattress actually is not an actual mattress, but it is an air mattress. I got it for 60 bucks on Amazon, super cheap, super easy. Some of the benefits are that it folds away super quickly uh, to get completely out of the way. It's light and easy to move if you wanna reposition it near windows. However, the negatives are that it's an air mattress and it can pop, which happened to me on a photo shoot when I was repositioning it near this window. I played it off like it was no big deal. <laughs> she still bought an upgraded album, but maybe for 60 bucks, it's a good idea to just have a spare. So let's talk about just some real easy upgrades that you can do to your studio or your home. I'm a big fan of throw rugs, blankets. Uh, these were both only $35 each. Uh, this one from Amazon, this one from Target. Those links are gonna be in the description. I bought so many things from Wayfair you wouldn't believe. This headboard's from Wayfair. That bar cart's from Wayfair. That mirror is from Wayfair. Even the bamboo, Wayfair. This coffee table is from Wayfair. This tree here, this is alfalfa, that's also from Wayfair. This console table, that's from Wayfair. This dining room table, <laughs> that's from Wayfair. This blanket was pretty much the best thing I ever purchased from Ikea for like $11. Also, they don't sell this exact one anymore, but this is perfect for these like silhouette shots. Everybody loves them and almost always buys this photo. I personally like to do same day sales sessions, which means that uh, right after the photo shoot, the client is gonna run, grab a Starbucks, grab a bite to eat, something like that for an hour. I'm gonna run upstairs and get the pictures ready for them to view. Okay, so this is the actual workstation where all of the editing gets done. If you guys haven't seen the editing tutorial that I put together, it's how I go through and edit an entire session in under an hour, get it ready for clients to view and purchase. Uh, it's gonna save you so much time, 
definitely recommend you checking that out. So I love this space, not only because I've got like the both monitors and I can enjoy my music and it's super clean space, but I also really love the view. All right, so this is where the sales session takes place. So typically we'll have the client just sit right next to me, pull out the laptop, stream their images up to the TV screen. Then we'll go through these sample albums to see what it is that they might want to purchase. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that tour. I want to go over a few takeaways. So the first is that it may seem like uh, it's overwhelming to get like a really beautiful studio and a space that has great light and a, and a big open space that makes sense for shooting that only you have access to. I want you to know I did not start here. And I think the thing that people run into the most is that they want it to be perfect before they get started. So let me tell you about my two previous spaces before this. So first was uh, in my house in Denver uh, where I only had a futon, only one futon. <laughs> the only piece of furniture that I had. Sometimes it was a couch and sometimes it was a bed with like a oversized sheet that was on it that like went way over the edges. But it didn't matter because I started shooting and clients were okay with it and I just made it seem like this is all that you need to have your boudoir session. As my business grew, I started purchasing more and more stuff for that. I gave myself a budget and I bought a bed with a head frame and I bought an actual couch and I bought a little chair and a rug to go along with it. And then I had myself a nice, you know, looking studio. But then when I moved to LA, I kind of had to start all over again. I moved in with two guy friends. It was a three bedroom place, one floor apartment, and there were two bathrooms. One was uh, my bathroom, which was in my room, and the other one was in the hallway. So when I would set up photo shoots, my two roommates would have to stay in their rooms for three hours while we did the shoot and pretend like they didn't live there until the client left and then they could come out. Also, I should mention that this space, uh, I was not in town when my friends chose it, and so they chose a place with yellow walls and not great light and old yellow floors and the skin tones were terrible. I just want to show you some of these shots so you can see what it was like when I first started shooting there. I mean, it is bare walls, ultra yellow. We didn't have anything up on the walls. We didn't have rugs. You'll never see a mattress. You don't see any pictures. You don't see anything that makes this look like a refined professional space. But if you learn to shoot it properly, then you can have beautiful pictures come out of it. Pictures that your clients will want to buy. And when they have a really good experience and really good photos that they want to buy, they won't care as much what the actual location is that you shoot. Also, for some reason, the light was only good in that space from like 8.30 in the morning to 11. So we had to start hair and makeup at 8 a.m. And I am the opposite of a morning person. So don't wait until you have the perfect space to shoot. Just start shooting. I'm gonna have links for all of these things below so you guys can go check them out and go pick them up. If you guys wanna see the full behind the scenes video of this photo shoot so you can see the space and kind of see what it's like when I do a photo shoot, definitely check out this video. I'll also link it in the description. But you'll be able to see how you can do so much with such a simple space. As always, if you guys have any questions about um, my business or about shooting or about anything, definitely leave that in the comments so I can make a video on it for you. Otherwise, I don't wanna hear another excuse from anybody about how they don't have a perfect place to shoot. I just want you guys to set something up and go out and shoot it. Promise me that. Get out there, get off YouTube. You can do it. I believe in you. Get going.